the executive governor was suspended. I'm pleased to announce, if you don't already know, that the president has named Mr. Henry F. Samoa as the acting governor of the Central Bank pending the process that will lead to uh, the appointment of the governor proper. I'd like to give a little bit of attention to what is supposed to be a reaction from the former president of Liberia in connection to the charging of several individuals. Basically, and I'd like to welcome Mr. Goodrich, Mr. Goodrich is a former minister here at the Ministry of Information, so I'm very honored to have him here, but he's here in a different jacket as the head of the Foreign Service Institute. But Liberia has a long, 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 long history of not holding people accountable for their excesses. Government after government will always sweep under the carpet the issues that concern accountability. But President Walker put forth himself to be president of Liberia. One of the commitments he made was that holding people accountable for their stewardship <coughs> will be a critical hallmark of his administration. The president did not initiate any special audit. The president thought to respect the existing institutions, the GSC, the ICC and the rest of them. Now don't forget, the leadership structure of these institutions are the same as they were under the former government. But if you look at their output, it's different. And that's where I believe the question of leadership comes in. So they now have a leader who is giving them the space, the opportunity to do their work independent of any influence, not even from the office of the president. And I believe in the two cases on hand, they've done a great job. And on account of what the LACC discovered, and I want to re-emphasize the fact that all the commissioners at the LACC were appointed just about the time the former president was leaving office. So those are his appointees, not President Walker's appointees. But they didn't care as to who appointed them. They just wanted to do a job based on professionalism, nationalism, and patriotism disregarding relationships and partisanship. And as a result of their work, the funding of their work, charges were brought forth against some of our friends and citizens. When charges are brought against you, such matter will be settled in the court of law. And I think why anybody who cares about Liberia would have done, perhaps, would be to embrace what has happened, call for speedy, fair, and transparent process in court, because that's what we all want. But to denounce an action based on funding for an investigation conducted at people you have appointed, 
classify it as a wish hunt and committing to resist it sends a terrible message that should not be coming from our former president. Some of the comments we heard from him leading us to ask several questions. <clears throat> Why is he defending people who have just been charged, not guilty of anything, still got court processes ahead of them? Someone will ask, why is he defending them? Would it be the best thing to allow the process to go forward? President, we are keen to power there were over 60 other reports left behind. We had an opportunity for his legal people to take those reports and determine whether there were basis for the prosecution of anyone. Because, of course, part of what happened during the last 12 years of President Selly was a lot of polit political inclinations. And the government was excessively corrupt. And the quote unquote excessively corrupt government was not of office. The new sherry was in town. That sherry did not. And when the new government is now trying to base on reports coming from people he appointed, take the actions that are necessary. comes fighting and vying to resist. We want to inform the former president that the government is neither deterred nor concerned at all about your printed trust. We will do what is required consistent with the law. If your people go to court, and prosecutors are unable to establish a case that leads to their conviction, then that's the law. And in that case, the law will be the law. If they are convicted by a court of competent jurisdiction, they will count for their deeds. And I believe, speaking on behalf of the government, that this is something we're supposed to embrace. Want to talk about which homes? Let me remind you about a few things since you want to discuss which one. You know, the way you come in defense of these individuals who've been charged shows that what you presided over as president. A scheme, a very grand scheme for that matter, that solved the industrialized looting of our country. But there's no secret. Let me ask you a few questions. Since you are now an opponent of foreign provision, I already never said it's an impression's body working at the Ministry of Gender. Just in the quest to exercise free speech in a Facebook comment, it was attacked by two of your officials, Carol Gray and somebody else. And the promise called that our days in government were none of them. Eventually, the threats Executed. Poor young lady, competent, very qualified, was kicked out of government because of her political view. Nobody cried behind you about which one. Move your book. You deliver your annual message. Unrelated, the man said, I'm going to deliver my annual message. Was kicked 
all of my return just because of that Facebook post. Patrick O'Connor. Left LBS, was not a private citizen, met all the requirements to run a radio station. Intentionally took the decision that on your watch, you will not run a radio station. And even after the young man used his qualification and competence to seek a job at Firestone, it was public information that he was demanding Firestone to dismiss him. Because he wanted to see him suffer and die. Thank God Firestone as an American company stood up to you. They didn't agree. It was to it. He was left at the LPRC when he got the left power. He was kicked out because of his connection to the UP. Patrick O'Connor, who didn't see him at LBS as a consultant, chased away because he was said to be supporting worker. I know my good friend Augustine got found when he left government, he established a consultancy friend here. He competed for and won the bid to provide some services to government. But the way the international system works, if the service you're providing is on communication and work, you do it at the Ministry of Information. If it's on finance and the economy, you do it to our Ministry of Finance. And even after the man's entity won the bid, you guys say you could not work with him. His winning of the bid was reversed. Have we forgotten that without any arrest warrant, Charles Selim, Mr. Weeks, Rachel Walker, Donald Haller, and an array of individuals were disgraced publicly at the Central Bank at almost 7 p.m. Handcuffed, dragged to the Monroe River Central, Central Prison, placed in orange jackets. How did the case came? There was no basis for that. Nobody cried. They allowed you to do what you thought was good for the law. And it comes back with an administration that is committed to holding people accountable. And rather than you join the process, you are issuing threats. When you led the country, had all the authorities control the army, control everybody, we didn't fear you. We will not fear you as a former president. Now while we are the government, I urge you, on behalf of the government, to encourage your people to cooperate in these matters. 